Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the SPIF rollout for July 2024. We'll get started in just a moment. Everybody who is attending the call today will receive a follow-up email with a copy of the presentation. You can also re-watch this presentation on DPT's YouTube page. We'll get started in just a moment. Again, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kim Brisky. I am the Director of Communications at Summer Corps. Welcome to the July 2024 SPIF District Rollout. Uh, during the presentation today, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A box on your screen. We'll have folks answering questions behind the scenes. Additionally, we will have a Q&A session at the end. Additionally, everybody who is participating in this webinar today will receive a follow-up email with a copy of the presentation, as well as you can re-watch this on DPD's YouTube page. We'll get started in just a moment, and we will um, get rocking and rolling here as soon as we have a full house. We appreciate your participation today. Alrighty, thanks again for everybody joining us. Just a reminder, any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to put them in the Q&A chat box. And without further delay, I'm going to turn it over to Gab over at DPD for an introduction of the SPIF program. Gab? Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> thank you for that introduction, Kim. Um, also, thank you everyone for joining us today. My name is Gabby Del Miranda, and I am a coordinator of economic development here at the city um, at the Department of Planning and Development, otherwise known as DPD. A representative from the city's SPIF administrator uh, program. So Summer Corps will be making our presentation today. And I just wanted to welcome you before we get started. The Small Business Improvement Fund, also known as SPIF, provides grants to small businesses and property owners to make needed improvements to their properties. Over the last few years, we have made a couple of changes to our SPIF program, including increasing the number of grants available to you and making new funding available in TIFs, TIF districts across the city. Technical assistance within this program is key. When you submit your application, you will be assigned a Summer Core project manager. That person is there to help you through the SPIP process. So if you have any questions about the process or run into issues that may delay your project, call your Summer Core project manager immediately and they can answer your questions and help you problem solve. Your local delegate agency is also another great resource. These delegate agencies are your local chamber, chambers of commerce or your community development organizations. During our presentation, Sylvia will uh, present a list of them so you can also get in contact with them for that uh, additional help. Just like Summer Corps project managers, they are also here to help you. They can often help with the SPIF application, getting you started with that, or with other things like introductions to local lenders and getting you through the city permit process. Uh, we're all here to support you and get your projects and applications in because we want to see your businesses and neighborhoods uh, flourish. With that, I'm happy to introduce you to Sylvia Orozco from SPIF, um, or our SPIF director from Summer Club. Thank you so much, Gabadale. As she mentioned, my name is Silvia Orozco. I am the director of the Small Business Improvement Fund program with Summer Corps. I've assisted over, oh, I would say hundreds of existing businesses, landlords, and startups over the years. Summer Corps is a non-for-profit organization. We are a small business lender that offers SBA loans. We administer the SPIF program, and we also administer the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund program. Now in its 25th year, SPIF is one of the longest running and most successful City of Chicago programs. We've helped retain and expand businesses in nearly every neighborhood, dispersing over $118 million in grants, 
to over 1,900 businesses. Please be advised that this is a non-residential program. The grant cannot be used for capital or operating expenses. It is specifically for infrastructure repairs. Thank you again for joining us. So we'll go ahead and get started with today's presentation. So today we will go over what is SPIF, what is our program mission and grant parameters. Getting started, is your business or property in a SPIF district? What SPIF districts are open or on deck? What are the SPIF program rules? How do you apply? And what resources are available to help? We will have information on the July rollout and also sample projects followed by SPIF bags and additional question and answer session at the end. Launched in 1999, the City of Chicago's Small Business Improvement Fund program promotes economic development by providing small businesses and landlords with reimbursement grants for permanent building improvement costs. Residential projects are not eligible. SPIF grant uses local tax increment financing, known as TIF, revenue to reimburse grantees for the pre-approved repair or rehab of their business facilities or adjacent land acquisition. Summer Corps is a program administrator contracted by the city's small, the excuse me, the city's Department of Planning and Development. Eligible applicants. The properties must be in a TIF district where SPIF funds are available and the SPIF is authorized to accept applications. Landlords of commercial or industrial properties qualify. Business owners of commercial or industrial businesses who either own or lease their places of business. Tenants with prior written approval from property owners and also startups are eligible. They may apply with a business plan a current City of Chicago business license is required prior to final reimbursement. Here we'll go over the eligibility limits. If you are a commercial tenant or owner occupied, on average, your gross sales must be less than $9 million per year. If you are a landlord or of a commercial or an industrial building, $9 million or less in cumulative net worth and $500,000 liquidity is the max per an individual in order to be eligible for SPIF. Industrial tenants or owner-occupied businesses must have 200 or fewer full-time employees. All owner-occupied properties are subject to both tenant and landlord requirements. The maximum grant amount allowed under SPIF is $250,000 per industrial properties. $150,000 is the maximum for each single owner or tenant of a commercial property or landlord. $250,000 is the max that may be granted per a multi-tenant property, commercial property, with $75,000 being the max assistance per each tenant or landlord. The applicants may receive one or more grants up to their maximum program assistance. Once this maximum is reached, the applicants will need to wait three years to reapply. Here we have a breakout of the percentage of eligibility that can be reimbursed. If your sales or net worth fall between zero to $3 million, you qualify for 90% reimbursement of eligible cost. With sales or net worth between three to six million, you'd qualify for 60% reimbursement. And sales or net worth between six to nine million, you'd qualify for a 30% reimbursement of eligible cost. All industrial businesses qualify for 50% of eligible cost. Here we have a grant calculation example. Let's say that Grace submits an application for a SPIF grants that's in an open district with a total eligible project cost of $100,000. She's proposing to make permanent building improvements to her existing retail shop for which she is the tenant. Grace has been in business for five years. Over the last three years, her gross sales averaged $1.5 million. Here we have a breakdown of eligible costs as follows. The total eligible project costs are at $100,000.
a commercial tenant applicants with gross sales of under $3 million, she qualifies for 90% SPIF grants, 90% reimbursement. The city's responsibility is at 90%, leaving it at $90,000, and the applicant's responsibility at 10% is at $10,000. The SPIF program is a reimbursement grant, so project participants should be prepared with financing to support the permanent building improvements up front. The SPIP program is a reimbursement grant, so project participants should be prepared with financing to support the cost of the permanent building improvements. Applicants are encouraged to contact their business lender or reach out to one of the lenders listed on the Summer Floors website in a timely manner. Grantees may choose to complete their projects in phases rather than requiring 100% of the upfront cost of the project. To participate, the grantees must receive an approval for the full scope of work and the phase work schedule. Construction timing will be completed based on necessity and the contractor's recommendations. Receiving phase disbursements will be based on progress or completion of eligible construction work. Here we have a phasing example. Let's say that a project requires a new roof and HVA system system and also facade renovations. With a contract price of $180,000, the SPIF grant approval at 90% reimbursement will be $150,000. So let's say that it's a priority for them to complete their roof. Their scope of work for the cost of the, excuse me, the contract price for the roof is $60,000. Eligible grant amount at 90% is $54,000. So the contractors can get that work done, the applicant pays for that work to be completed, then submits the proof that the work has been done and paid for. We will then reimburse the applicant 90% of their cost with the reimbursement of $54,000. We keep the remainder of those funds reserved until the next phase is completed. So for the second phase, the HVAC system priced at $40,000, the applicant will then receive a reimbursement for $36,000. They can use those funds to complete the third phase. So you can do up to three phases. SPIP project timeline. Here we have a timeline. Once an applicant is moved into stage one, this is the applicant eligibility review period. The applications completed by a tenant or property owner must prove site control. They do have up to 20 days to submit all of the requested application materials. If it's deemed eligible, it will then move to stage two, which is the project eligibility review phase. Here we are looking at your plans, your bids and specifications, all debts should be cured at this time. You have up to 120 days to submit these required items. Once these items are ready to be presented to the city for review, there is a stage three where this is the project construction phase. Once approved by DPD, the applicants will receive a conditional commitment letter and construction can begin. Concurrently, the proof of permit or permit must be submitted within 120 days following the date of the commitment letter, up to 10 months. Proof of financing, um, the applicants do need to provide a proof of funds. They have up to 120 days following the date of the commitment letter to prove that they have the financing to complete the project in order to keep the application active. Stage four is the reimbursement phase. Once the project is completed, the applicant will be required to submit the payment documentation. This will include a sworn statement, invoices, canceled checks, waivers of lien. These are sent to Summer 4 for review. After a final site visit and processing of documents, the reimbursement check will be delivered in four to six weeks. 
Unless DPD has granted an extension, the applicants who do not complete each stage within the required phase time limit will be disqualified and removed from the program. Is your business or property in a SPIF district? You can visit our website at summercorecom slash SBIA to see if your property is in a SPIF district. Once you get to this page, you can confirm by clicking number one, and it will take you to the next page, which is the SPIF locator tool. So here you'd enter your address and it will give you detailed information based on that specific property. Here it will tell you if it's in a TIP district, it will have the TIP district's name, the rollout date, and also the delegate agency's information on this page. Which SPIF districts are open or on deck? Eligible SPIF districts in Chicago span neighborhoods on the north, south, and west sides. Each month marks a new 30-day period in which SPIF districts with available funds open for applications. Notice of district openings are provided to relevant aldermen, posted on DPD and Summer Corps websites, and included in the SPIF gram. Please visit our website for the most up-to-date list of open and on-deck districts. What are the SPIF program rules? What business and organization types are ineligible to apply? Those that do not qualify for SPIP include chain and franchise businesses, currency exchange stores, places of worship, liquor stores, tobacco dealers, things of that sort do not qualify for SPIP. This list is not comprehensive. If you're unclear whether or not your business qualifies, you can always reach out to Summer Corps and we'll advise further. What improvement costs are eligible for SPIP? We can cover the roof and facade, components of signs or awnings which are permanently affixed to the building, alterations or structures needed for ADA compliance such as railings or ramps or also build out of ADA accessible restrooms, HVAC and other mechanical systems, plumbing and electrical work, certain project-related architectural and construction management fees that are related to the SPIF approved project can also be covered. Permanent interior renovations, including fixtures, and the purchase of adjacent land parcels for purpose of expansion or parking. What improvement costs are ineligible for SPIF funding? SPIF does not cover any new construction, whether it's an addition or expansion or building from the ground up. Standalone minor repairs or cosmetic improvements do not qualify. They can be covered if they are part of a build out, gut renovation or a larger project. Equipment related expenses such as kitchen appliances, computers, office furniture, things of that sort that can easily be taken out of the building do not qualify for SPIP reimbursement. Planters that are surrounding or affixed to the building, any outdoor dining or drinking areas, including roof decks, beer gardens, outdoor patios, balconies, awnings, porches, and decks are excluded. Any fencing, including pergolas, trellises, arbors, privacy screens and similar structures, parking lot construction or repair, landscaping, and work on the interior of residential units do not qualify for SPIF reimbursement. What are the SPIF design requirements? The applicants for commercial properties seeking a grant of $25,000 or greater are required to make at least one exterior improvement using at least 10% of the maximum grant amount. To receive project approval from DPD, the improvements must conform to DPD's design guidelines. The applicants are strongly advised to consult with some report and design professionals on design requirements and guidelines before drawing up plans for work. 
key exterior design guidelines that DPD will review during, during the approval stage include preserving or recreating the original design and window openings when possible, incorporating permanent signage to clearly identify the business, adequate lighting, especially near entrances to welcome customers, avoiding window clutter, the window should let in natural light and attract passerbys to the business. Please refer to the Department of Buildings guidelines for on-premises window signs for more information. Other forms of security are preferred, but if necessary, only interior mounted security gates that are integrated into the storefront design will be reimbursed. What applicant compliance measures are in place? Checks will be performed on all applicants during the approval stage to ensure that they are complying with child support laws and not indebted to the city. Any scoff law debt must be cured to participate in SPIP. Applicants can cure, debt, can cure the debt via a payment plan. They must be current on all payment plans to be in compliance with that to receive the SPIP reimbursement funds. All applicants must be current on property taxes to receive conditional commitments for funding or reimbursement for completed work. Each applicant must sign an economic disclosure statement. The grantees must sign an affidavit certifying that they will not relocate out of the TIF district or sell the business or property within a three-year period following disbursement of funds. To be reimbursed, landlord applicants have an must have an executed lease with a qualified tenant, and that tenant must be occupying and actively operating their business or nonprofit out of the lease space. How do you apply? You can visit our website at spiff at summercord.com slash spiff to complete the application within the designated open acceptance period. Please allow two business days for Summer Court to confirm receipt of your application via an email response. If you do not receive an email confirmation within this time, please send an email to spiff at summercord.com or call the main line at 312-360-3300. The applicants are responsible for making sure submissions are received within the open acceptance period. Applications received after 5 p.m. on the last day of the acceptance period will not be eligible. What resources are available to help? You can visit our website to access resources to support your SPIF project. You can also connect with your local delegate agency for assistance in filling out your application. Get to know your local delegate agency. These organizations are assigned to assist small businesses in these fifth districts that are opening in July. Keep in mind that this information will be provided to you after the uh, webinar is complete. Within 24 hours, you should receive this presentation, so you'll have this information handy to you. Here we have the list of districts that are open for July. These include 24th in Michigan, 71st in Stony Island, Austin Commercial, Roosevelt Cicero Industrial Corridor, and Woodlawn. We are now accepting applications through July 30th at 5 p.m. Here we have a sample project. This project was in the Austin Commercial TIF District. This is New Vision Collision. They are at 4825 West Division. Here you can see a few pictures of the before of the exterior and interior of the building. And here we have the after pictures of the exterior and interior. As you can see, this was a drastic improvement Great curb appear, appeal here and also better functionality for not only the customers, but also the workers there. 
Their work summary included demolition of an existing storefront system and facade elements. The facade improvements, including a new veneer stone facade, installation of new aluminum frame storefront system with new glass windows and door, and the replacement of existing glass block windows. The interior renovations included the installation of framing and drywall for a new ceiling, drywall repairs as needed, repair the subfloor and install new flooring, new doors, painting, and renovated two restrooms. The HVAC work, including a new furnace, condenser, and duct work, and the electrical work, including rewiring of the office and locker room, as well as installation of recess lighting. Moving on to the SPIF program facts. What additional documents should you have on hand to submit along with the SPIF application? While it's not required when submitting the initial application form, please note that these items are required to complete the SPIF application process. The required documents vary depending on applicant type. A list of items will be provided to all applicants to specify exactly what is required. So for example, if you operate a business here, we'd ask you for your business tax returns and licenses. Everyone is required to submit their proof of property ownership. Um, so some of these things will be provided to you. Some of the templates will be provided and some items will be required for you to submit on your behalf. Are startups or new businesses eligible? Yes, most startups can apply. Startup applicants will need to supply a detailed business plan and projections of the business's income and expenses for its first 36 months of operation as part of their application materials. The City of Chicago reserves the right to impose additional conditions for funding in connection with startup business applications. If you've only been in business for one to two years, Summer Corps requires tax returns and a projection of gross sales to equal three years of data. Am I eligible if I live outside of Chicago? The important consideration is where you have your business or your property. To participate in SPIF, your property must be in the city of Chicago as the funding source comes from the city of Chicago property taxes. If your business or property is in another area, please call that city's planning, economic development, or community development department to see what other programs may be available to assist small businesses. What if my building has both business and residential spaces? This program is primarily for business use, but there are mixed use exceptions. For these buildings, many envelope projects such as roofing, facade improvements, and tuck pointing can be eligible. Will there be enough SPIF funds for all applicants? Each tax increment financing TIF district that has the SPIF program authorized in it has limited funds reserved for the program. If the demand for the SPIF funds is greater than the available funding supply, then a lottery will be conducted to determine the order in which each grant application may be accommodated. If any surplus funds become available, they will be allocated to waitlisted applicants. Can SPIF funds be used with other City of Chicago grant programs? <clears throat> the answer is no. SPIF cannot be used, excuse me. SPIF cannot be used at the same time as other financial assistance programs, like the Neighborhood Opportunity Funds or the Chicago Recovery Plan grants on the same project covering the same work. However, you may apply for multiple grants at the same time and select the best fit for your project, provided that you stay within the grant timeline requirements. Is there SPIF funding available in my district? Every SPIF area has its own budget that the city refills if it has TIF funds available and if there is a demonstrated need for grant money. We also maintain an interested parties list for funds, which you can also send an email to spiff at summercore.com to join. 
when more funding becomes available or the city allocates more funds, we will let you know. The interested parties list helps the city of Chicago gauge demand for additional funding. What if I am in a TIF and it is not a SPIF? Tax increment financing is the mechanism that funds the Small Business Improvement Fund. If you are in a TIF district and it does not have a SPIF, please contact your alderman. Here we have contact information for the summer court team and Nora Curry, who is the director on the city side with the Department of Planning and Development. You can visit both websites. Uh, summer Corps has a website for SPIF as well as the city of Chicago. Keep in mind that the Google Translate is available at the Chicago's website. The resources are available in other languages. Again, thank you for joining us. The copy of the presentation and a link to a video will be emailed to all attendees. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sylvia. Again, now is a great time for everybody uh, watching the call today. If you have any questions, you can feel free to put them in the Q&A box right now. Um, Sylvia, if you want to get started maybe with uh, just the basic first question, which is what are some of the common challenges that you see for SPIF applicants? So the biggest challenge since this is a reimbursement grant is upfront financing. So you do not have to have the upfront financing available this moment as you apply during the month of July. However, we do advise you to start looking for financial resources immediately. I always say check in with your bank, let them know that you're participating in the SPIF program and see if they are accommodating to provide a construction grant to you. We can also sign a letter of direction in which the grant proceeds will be paid directly to the bank to pay off a portion of your loan and you will be responsible for paying off the remainder of the loan. So that is an option. Um, another challenge would be finding good architects and also contractors. So you want to be very careful of contractors reaching out to you for, you know, assistance um, in completing their SPIF projects. Uh, we do have a list of contractors that some of our SPIF recipients have used in the past. We also provide a list of licensed contractors provided by the City of Chicago. They the contractors do need to have a city of Chicago business license, but they don't need to be located within the city of Chicago. So those are you know, two of the biggest challenges. Uh, keep in mind that you will have a summer core project manager assigned to you. So you have a contact person throughout the entire, um, basically throughout the entire process from start to finish. So if you have questions, I would, Definitely, you know, suggest that you ask them before making any changes. You know, if there's anything going on, please let the project manager know. They will advise further and, you know, we can keep things moving along, let you know if there's something that, you know, may pose, you know, a problem and may jeopardize your grant. Right. So if there is a delay or an issue, it's always best to reach out to your project manager, let them know there might be a solution that we can help you with. Um, you spoke a little bit uh, earlier about, uh, you know, startups as well as existing business requiring um, a city of Chicago license, but are there some instances where perhaps it's only a state license? Can you just talk about that and clarify how you can meet the requirement for that? Yes. So there are some businesses that are exempt from requiring city of Chicago business licenses. So with that, um, they most likely are regulated by the state of Illinois. So if you do not have a city of Chicago business license or you're exempt, you do have to have a state of Illinois license. So for example, a real estate broker, you know, will not have a city of Chicago business license, but they'll have their broker's license. So we'll request that in lieu of the city license. All right, um, somebody asked, what if you own two commercial properties connected to each other? Can you speak specifically about the maximum amount of grant funds that you can obtain? Sure, so if it is a contiguous property directly next to each other, owned by the same person, there's no separation, there's no alley or street or anything like that in between, then they will be capped as one property. So 
that property, you know, if it's two buildings, they qualify for $150,000. So you can decide what you want to use those funds for. Great. Um, one person asked for clarity. Once grants are given, other grants cannot be used for that specific project but could be used for other projects within that business. Um, so maybe we need to just talk again about sort of how the grants play together um, and what caps would be put on that. Yes, so you can apply for multiple grants, but you cannot, you cannot receive more than one grant for the same property for the same scope of work that you're looking to do. And with SPIF specifically, it's written into our ordinance that any other city of Chicago funding that has been obtained within the past three years will be deducted from what's eligible through SPIF. So for example, if you have a single commercial property, you would qualify for $150,000 grant, but you received a NOF grant a year ago for $50,000. So that $50,000 will be reduced uh, by the SPIF eligibility amount. So that means your SPIF grants will now be capped at $100,000. Great. Um, so somebody wanted to know specifically if you can this be used for daycare or uh, child care. I would say, um, you know, specifically it couldn't be in-home uh, daycare business, but if you actually have daycare there. Um, but what, somebody they said specifically could it be used for an income property. Um, could you talk a little bit about that? So a daycare as a business does qualify. Um, you know, it all depends on who's actually applying for these types of things. You know, if it's an investment property and you own the building either individually or through an LLC, you can still qualify for SPIF and receive the grant there. You know, but as far as business type, daycare centers do qualify. Great. Um, you know, we've had we have a couple of people saying they weren't able to connect with delegate agencies. Um, and so if somebody has questions specifically about filling out their application, uh, is, should, is it good for them to just reach out to Summer Corps? Maybe we can find a better resource for them. If they are not able to get in touch with any of the delegate agencies, I would appreciate it if someone would let us know. So, you know, we know those who are not being responsive, maybe we can reach out to them, probably better explain the SPIF process and see what's going on with that. But these delegate agencies are designed to assist you with this process. So please give us a heads up. If you are not getting any responses from the delegate agencies, we'd be more than happy to walk you through the process you know, assist in uh, completing the application, revising any documentation. You know, we're always here for technical assistance. And to that end, there's a specific question for somebody who was uh, a veteran who was interested in using the SPIF program. We don't specifically have any uh, anybody who's actually has, you know, for veterans using the SPIF program. But again, feel free to use the other delegate agencies, reach out to us, or I'm sure that within the uh, city of Chicago, they also have uh, veteran resources that they could also be of assistance to you. Um, let's see if I have anything. Ah, uh, am I eligible for the SPIF grant for a three flat? Um, one is unit owner occupied and the other are rentals, um, but I can't produce a, uh, oh. so, so I guess the question there, this one is a little bit more specific, but can we talk maybe a little bit about how a multi-tenant building would work with the SPIF program? How does that work with the grant amounts? And then how does that work if you're a landlord for a multi-tenant space? So for multi-tenant spaces, it can go one of two ways. One can be the landlord applies for grants and can get up to $150,000 just for the landlord. That means that landlord is denying any other SPIF tenants from applying. There's the second option in which the landlord can apply, the tenants can also apply. In that case, each applicant will be capped at $75,000 each with the entire property being capped at $250,000. So we will not cover any residential aspect, any common use space, any interior residential, you know, um, exterior facade windows, things of that nature that pertain to the residents. Those will strictly be excluded. 
All right. Um, I know that there's a couple of specific questions um, that was related for the call or for the uh, participant who had a three flag. So I'm going to say uh, send us an email at spiff at summercore.com and we can we can kind of review that. Um, so it's somebody been, asked. Oh, sorry. Going back to that question, um, mm -hmm. if it's strictly residential, then we cannot assist. But if there's yeah. commercial spaces on the ground floor, we could consider. It. Great. Um, so this question is actually for any industry, but specifically this person was a daycare. It's a startup. They don't have their license yet. But honestly, for any business, if you if you're a startup and you don't have your license yet, are you still eligible to apply? And sort of like, what are your your deadlines to get the, those things in order? So yes, you can still apply. We do require a business plan and projections of income and expenses for the next 36 months. You can get approved for SPIF, get the work done, and also work on obtaining your license within that specific time frame. Awesome. So okay. you do have looking. to have that license before we can just fully disperse the funds. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I think also in relation to to life or, or having something together before you can move forward in a project. What about um, site control? Can you speak a little bit about what is site control and what the requirements are for that as well? Sure. Site control is basically if you own the property, you have to have a deed in your name, you know, a trust in your name. It has to be tied to you. Um, for a tenant, you do have to have a lease agreement execute at lease agreements with the term of at least three years going forward. There's also an affidavit that is required to be completed by the landlord, which basically states that he's giving you approval to do renovations to his property. So it will specify the exact scope of work that you're looking to do. And it also specifies that the landlord will not contribute funds to complete the SPIF program or the SPIF project as an applicant you're required to finance the project yourself. Great. Um, and if you if you are possibly, you know, on the cusp of signing a lease or on the cusp of getting the deed taken care of, um, you know, I think you can still apply, but just yes. know that very quickly, once the uh, application period ends, we're starting to look through applications. And if you don't have the site control in order very quickly, um, we'll, we'll have to, you know, move forward um, because we want to make sure that the funding gets out the door as quickly as possible. That is uh, correct. And keeping in mind that you'll have 20 days from the date that we send out the letter to get everything in order. Awesome. Well, I think that's it for questions now. Thanks, Sylvia. Thanks to everybody who came Thank to the call you. today. I hope everybody has a great and safe uh, holiday weekend, and we look forward to seeing all your applications. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good one, guys.